So today I'm going to test out this sketchbook that I got from Ikea. Um, I've redesigned the front because I wanted to have a different design, um, so I put some washi tape over it. And now it's time to test out to see what the paper can actually handle supplies wise. Um, now the paper is, let me just check I'm in frame. Yeah, the paper is lovely and thick but it's that kind of um, handmade absorbent kind of paper so I'm a bit concerned that there'll be um, a lot of bleeding um, but we'll see um, it is thicker than some of the handmade papers I've played around with in the past so I'm hoping that the thickness will act as a bit of a, a barrier to the mediums that we'll put on the paper so let's um, have a go I've got um, a selection of supplies here to, tr to test it with um, so I think we'll just dive right in really and, and have this first page as a bit of a tester page so um, let's see what happens so um, here is my um, food a brush pen so I don't know what should we draw um, leaves leaves and flowers and things like that are always a good go-to when you don't know what to draw so actually the bleeding it does bleed a bit but it's not too bad can you see that yeah that's quite nice I, I quite like that actually it's not bleeding much it's just sort of ever so slightly around the edge of your line there's a few sort of dotty bits but Overall, that's quite nice. That's not gone through to the back, so that's good. So, uh, thumbs up for the food a pen. Okay, I should imagine the Pentel brush pen will also be similarly successful. Yep, I'm liking that. Hasn't gone through. Now a little bit of information about this sketchbook. This particular one um, wasn't placed with the other sketchbooks that they've got on offer. Uh, what I mean by that is um, the other sketchbooks were on a shelf and there was a label um, underneath it saying sketchbooks. Whereas this one was on a, a different shelf, uh, but it is exactly the same paper inside. Um, the difference being that the binding on this one uh, is like this. Um, so I'm thinking maybe they meant for this one to be more of like a photo album or a notebook whereas the binding on the ones that they called sketchbooks were more your um, you know stacks of um, what do you call them what I mean is like this I, I've completely my mind's gone blank but um, signatures that's it um, signature binding so the, the the other ones that they called sketchbooks were, were more bound like this a sort of more of a regular sketchbook binding um, and they were great too, but I just really liked this one. Um, but I wanted to, you know, do my own design on the front. So, let's try out the Unipin Fine Line. Now, um, yep, so this one was about, I think it was three or four pounds. Um, and you get loads of paper in it. Um, so, I, I really like that. I'm liking that. As I say, I've used um, sort of handmade papers before, like this. In this sketchbook here, it's a thinner paper, um, but that make that means that it's quite. Hang on, which way around does it go? That means that it's quite difficult to use with wet media, um, without the paper buckling um, or the media um, seeping through. So, uh, but I've had a few successful results uh, with this. So, um, but yeah, this paper in this one is a lot thicker, so I, I wanted to try that. So we've got here, the Unipin Fine Liner works really well as well. Um, no bleeding there. On to the next one, we've got here a Stabilo Fine Point. This pen works on this paper pretty well too. Next up, 
I've got one of my gel pens from my Cheap Art Supplies Challenge. This was from the uh, one of the pound shops, I think it was Poundland. Um, I think I got six for a pound. Um, and this one is uh, Link Saffron Max Gel. That's looking pretty good, I like that. This is the other one, this is my favourite pen at the moment. This is another one from the Cheap Art Supplies Challenge from Poundland. It's the Link Zap Gel Pen. Um, and it's a, a fine line. Yep, that's that's doing well. So far, I'm well impressed with this paper. Now, uh, yeah, one of the pens that I'm not that keen on is the Uniball Eye. Um, a lot of people absolutely love this pen, but I find that when I try and use it, it tends to sort of bleed into whatever paper I'm using. So I thought it'd be good to try it on this one because if any pens are going to bleed, it'll be this one, I suspect. Yeah, see this one is giving more of a similar effect to the Fude and Pento brush pens. It's got an ever so slight kind of bleeding around the edges. Obviously it doesn't affect the overall um, look of the drawing, but if you look up close you can see that. So let's see if we can zoom in a bit. So as you can see the brush pens got you know quite a jittery line to them and that's where it's kind of bled into the paper a bit and as you can see the, the one that I've just done oh there's my finger the one that I've just done here has a similar kind of effect but it's a really nice black um, line there so I've also got some sort of felt tip pens I've got a, a stabilo pen here yeah, I'm liking that. Let's just check. Yep, nothing's coming through the other side yet. Next up we've got similar colour in the Stedler Tri Plus version. I like to draw intentionally wonky sometimes, but if I get an accidental wonky flower then all the better. Yep, that works pretty well too. Got a bit of a pink theme today. I've got one of my um, Boldermere brush pens here from the works try that. I am loving this sketchbook so far. Okay, that's good. Now I've got a Muji 0.38 gel pen in this nice green colour here. Um, it can be a, a bit difficult to um, draw across it with a smooth ink flow, especially if you've got a very fine pen. But that's pretty good. Now, um, my Sumi ink, let's have a go with that. If you wash out your brush a bit, you can then use the ink in a diluted way. You get gorgeous grey shade. And even though that's quite watered down, it's not bleeding too much. So that's really interesting. I, I have high hopes for my watercolours now. Mm, that went a bit skew if. Oh well, we like skew if things. Wonky flowers and skew if leaves. It's all good. Let's grab some colours. I have here the Prima Marketing watercolours. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Now let's see what happens if I add a bunch of water first. So let's um, add a load of water. Now I'm sort of adding kind of petal shaped pools of water here reason being will become clear in a moment and grab some nice kind of colours there uh, you dab in your paint get a nice thick application of paint dab it in and it usually spreads now the reason it's not spreading as you can probably guess is how absorbent this paper is now if I'd have done this on regular watercolour paper 
them, the pool of water probably would have stayed there a little bit longer, allowing me to dab my paint in. And it would have spread to fill the water splodge. That was a bit of a technique fail, but there's a reason for it. This paper is super absorbent and that is why that has happened. So we need to work in a different fashion. We need to work quickly. Um, working wet in wet, you need to kind of wet it as you go. That's really good. Um, if I just check the back. Yep, that's coming through a bit there because I've added a lot of water. So I have to keep myself in check when I'm using this for watercolour. You know, you can't, I suppose that's where your layering comes in because you'll want to sort of add your first layers, let it dry, then add the next layers. Because if you keep adding and adding and adding water like I am here, um, the paper is going to buckle and the colour is going to seep through. So I've got here my Mondulez, uh, Koei Noor Mondulez watercolour pencils. That's, um, that's good because I have tried using pencil in this one here but it, it doesn't take to it very well. Um, so this paper is, is definitely Stronger is the word I'm thinking. It's kind of, it can handle the application of dry media as well as wet media. And then if we do our leaves using the ink tents. Okay, let's get our water. 